All right, good afternoon and welcome to Ivy Learn Function Junction episode number four. This is Kara Monroe. I'm the VP of Academic Innovation for Ivy Tech. With me answering your questions in the question panel today is my colleague Matthew Pittman, the Executive Director of the Center for Instructional Technology. Um, you're probably used to Kathy Long doing these webinars today. She is off on a much deserved break for a few days and so Matthew and I are filling in for her and I'm actually really excited about this. This was the one as we were sort of laying out the schedule for all the training I said I really kind of want to do that one and it uh, happened to line up with uh, Kathy's uh, time off so it was perfect that uh, I get to lead this one. So. It's kind of one of my favorite new features of Ivy Learn. So today we are going to explore the use of the content editor and create content with a content editor um, and then use the content selector, which is probably truly my favorite part of the content editor, uh, to link between items in our course. Function junctions, as you'll recall, whoopsie, sorry, um, are uh, just short 30-minute hits, so we're just going to focus on that one thing. But if you've got questions about other things, Matthew knows everything, so he is a great person to have in the question panel today asking them, answering those for you. Um, we are going to start, just as we always do, by going to ivylearn.ivytech.edu and logging in with your uh, username and password. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to give you a quick hit here on the content editor. Um, the content editor, as you see it in Ivy Learn, is divided into two parts. The content editor here on the left-hand side of the screen, and then the content selector over on the right-hand side of the screen that lets you select all sorts of different kinds of content to link to and add into your course. And you're going to find that rich content editor um, in at least all of these places, pages, discussions, assignments, announcements, quizzes. It's going to show up in a few other places, but these are the main ones where we're going to be creating content. All right. So with that, I am going to close down the PowerPoint here and pull up my course. I'm going to use this one. All right. There we go. So I'm in a sample course here that is uh, that I actually downloaded from the Commons just to have some content here, and we are going to focus in on that content editor. So I'm going to go over to Pages. If you've been in some of uh, Kathy's previous sessions, you may remember Pages appears grayed out over here. That means uh, one of two things. Either that I have selected to have it removed from the menu, which is the case in this uh, situation, or um, that there's no content under it. Now, this has plenty of content under it. I've just selected for it not to be under the course menu. Um, students would actually be navigating this course through modules. So remember, that's what grayed out means. It can mean one of two things. Either you've removed it for the men from the menu, or uh, there's no content under it yet. Okay. In Pages, once you've selected a course homepage, a little fancy dancy course homepage like we have here, um, and I could edit this specific page, but I like this page, it looks pretty good. So I'm actually going to go into View All Pages and take a look at a different page to edit or create. So I've got all of these pages that I could edit, but I'm actually going to create a new page because I want to link between a, a couple of different pages in this. So to create a new page and now we see that content editor. Now I know several of you read this morning's email that I sent out on behalf of our Ivy Learn project team. I got emails from a few of you so thank you for that. It's nice to get uh, feedback regardless of whether it's good or bad but I think all of it was good this morning, really positive and a couple of really good suggestions. And in that email we featured our very first sort of system update that was one of those discoverable updates, a little update that happened um, that we'll try to start to tell you about um, in those in that Ivy Learn Faculty Resource Center. But there's another one that I want to tell you about, and that is that you can actually now create new pages right here from this Pages Content Selector. So um, prior to this update, this update got added, um, I think, actually overnight tonight. So I didn't actually check it before I got on here. So we are just uh, we're Plan it fast and loose here the Friday before spring break. Um, but this was added over overnight and is a brand new feature as of this morning that would allow us to link to a new page. Um, so if you haven't yet created the page that you want to link to with our content selector, you could actually create that page here and then you could go add content, content to it later. Okay? But let's start out with a, a couple of things here just about our content editor. So you'll notice in my screen, uh, you may notice that I get these little drop down options. That's just because of the browser I use. I use Google Chrome um, and it will remember the last several things that I have typed into a box with this uh, title or name. 
uh, just like all of you, I'm doing a lot of content creation in Ivy Learn right now, so I've got a lot of options. If I don't like any of those, I don't want to reuse one, I can just type something else. So this is going to be Introduction to Equations. We're doing a math class because those are always my favorite. Okay? And um, so for this class, I want to find a, uh, first of all, I want to find a TED Ed video on equations. So I'm going to click here. I've got a lot of different options of things that I can add to uh, this. So I'm going to add a couple of things here. Um, first of all, I'm going to add a quick TED Ed video. And I'm going to type in equations. And I'm going to hit enter. And there is a really good one on here about Einstein's riddle. And I'm going to use this throughout this lesson. If I were constructing this lesson, I'd played this on TED Ed and I want to use this. To add this into my course, I can just hit embed. Okay, and it'll take just a second and it will embed that. Right? Now, it just puts that big gray box in there, but I can just click here on the right-hand side of that gray box and hit enter, and I can start to add in my text. Welcome to our session on equations. In this section, we will be covering solving uh, linear equations. Okay. Now, maybe I want to add a little formatting to that text so it's not quite so uh, so basic. And I actually want to make it. I want to make it two lines, and I want to center this. So I'm going to click on this, and I can use these options here at the top to align, center, and write justify. So I'm going to just center that. And um, then I am going, did I say session? I did. Lynn, I'm sorry. Lynn Barbie gets the gold star for calling me out. I keep calling them sessions, and they're now modules. Um, I just did the introduction to Blackboard for uh, second eight weeks. It was literally probably the first time I've logged into Blackboard to do anything other than getting content out of it in about a month. Um, and so I, um, I was back in Blackboard brain. So Lynn, thank you, Gold Star, for correcting me. Um, and everybody else correct me when I use Blackboard terms. So um, in this page now, I want to also add um, a couple of other uh, pieces of highlighting. So I'm going to highlight what is um, really important. So the, the sort of learning outcome I want students to get out of this, I want to boldface that. So I'm going to put that in bold. So I can use some nice formatting here. We will do this in three lessons. Okay. So those are, and then I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to add a bulleted list, and I'm going to link to the three lessons that are actually a part of my um, my pages over here. So I'm going to come over here to my pages, and I'm going to link to those three lessons. So the first one is, um, let's see, where's it at? Introduction to Equations of Lines and Systems of Linear Equations. So I just clicked it, and it put in this nice little link for that page, which is awesome. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to do my next one, which is more practice problems on equations of lines. And then I'm going to do my last one, which is this additional resources for equations of lines. Okay? So what I've done now is I've actually created, rather than if you think about, and I am going to use this one intentionally, in our former LMS, um, everything kind of had to just be linear. So I had to start at the top of the screen and I had to scroll all the way down. Okay, and um, then when I got to the end, I had finished all my all my lessons. In Ivy Learn, I can actually link between pages, between assignments, between modules. And Marina is asking me um, a great question in the chat panel or in the question box. So those pages have already been created that I'm linking to. And Marina is correct. So this is a class that has a lot of content already built out in it, and so. This might be, if you think about in our template, in our course template, what I'm actually probably creating here is like the module overview page, um, that lesson overview to tell students all the different things they're going to do and all their reading assignments and things you could create one page that links out to all of the different other pages that you've already created. Okay? Um, I'm going to add one more thing to this particular page um, before we save it and publish it. <laughs> and um, that is a, a quick little video from me, all right? So I am going to uh, add a video of myself um, because I can record and upload media pretty much anywhere that I want to um, in Ivy Learn. And Matthew, I'm 
quick at some questions, why don't I let you take Phyllis's because I am not sure of the answer to that one. So, and Maureen, I will show you how we can use this with the modules in just a second. Um, so I'm going to add a quick little video of myself here, and uh, because I'm apparently more vain than usual today, I just took off my glasses for all of you, so let me hit my record and upload media box. Um, and this is a box that will come up anytime I want to record media, and I do have to say allow to let it use my camera and microphone on my computer. And it's going to take just a second here to connect. Hopefully the network, oh no, you don't see my camera. It's right there in front of me. Why can't you find it? Let's see if it'll allow my microphone to be used. Huh, it's letting that happen today. Let's see if it'll find the camera now. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. See, sometimes you just have to click a couple of different times. And it's going to show up over here. So let me do that. This is a terrible angle. All right, so once we select our camera, we just say click anywhere to start recording. And so I'd look right at the camera and I would talk about whatever important mathy topic I'm going to talk about today. I might even wave just so you can see I'm a real person. And then I'd hit stop to do that. And then when you're done with that, turn that back around, just hit save on the screen here and let's give it a title too. Introduction to Equations by Kara, and hit Save. And I've just uploaded that recording. It'll take just a second, and it'll show there in my screen. All right. Now, a couple of other things about that uh, little media box. One of the things that I prefer to do, and that I strongly recommend, so that students with different uh, learning needs get their option, get get an option that's right for them, is that you actually type a script for yourself and then use that script to record your media and give students access to both the script and the, uh, and the video. I'll show you how I do it, my little cheat for doing that in a minute. When I'm done, I want to make sure students can see this content. So what do I have to do to make sure my students can see it? Do I want to save or do I want to save and publish? Save and publish, that's right, because I'm done with it. It's ready for students to see. Go. Oh, very good. Excellent. So I've saved and published that. I can see that it's available to my students. And look how elegant that looks. It's just a really nice looking page. Um, now, you might say, well, Kara, that welcome to our session on equations is not very centered. Um, it is actually centered across the whole page. Look at it relative to this line right here. That's the full page width. Um, so that just gives you an idea of sort of how the centering works uh, in here in Ivy Learn. Okay. Now, Maureen asked a fantastic question. She's actually asked too. Maureen always asks great questions. That's why I love seeing her in these videos. She wants to know, can I make this smaller? It's a little big right now, and I can. So let's edit this page and let it adjust there. You were seeing all the magic behind it. And if I click on this, notice I get those little handles up here. I can actually drag those to resize that just a little bit. So that'll make it a little bit better. And I can actually center it so that it lines up with that welcome to our session on equations. And I can do the same thing with my little personal video down at the bottom. Or maybe I can't today. We're not going to try that right now. I'm going to hit save. It, once it gets replaced with the actual preview icon, you can move it around. But there, that looks a little nicer, doesn't it? It's a little prettier um, once, you, uh, once you get that in there. So nice looking, nice looking page. Now, Maureen also asked another question if we could ever use this. Um, in a, a module. And then Deborah also asked another question, where will that page appear in the course? Do you have to move it into a module? Um, and those two questions, the answer to them is kind of sort of, it depends on how you want to do it. So let's look at both of those. All right, let's go back to view all, let's, let's look at modules first. Let's look at Maureen's approach. So Maureen's approach to organizing the page is to use modules. Okay, so I'm going to go to modules and I actually want to add this as the introduction here, I'm going to delete, maybe I don't like this page, this introduction to solving linear equations. I want another module page, so I'm going to add a page, and I'm going to come over to Pages, and I have to remember what I called that. Ah, oh, sorry guys, I was not paying attention. Uh, Hang on just a second. What did I call that? 
This is why you need to name your <laughs> name things with uh, their module numbers. This is you now know why we cheat. If you've looked at the statewide uh, template, the reason why we I think I named it this. No, I didn't. I know I didn't. All right, so let me show, oh, there it is, Introduction to Equations. I gave it a nice, simple name. And I can hit Add, add Item. You now know why we've cheated and we have put the M number in front of the page titles when we create them with the statewide template, because that happens all the time. We forget what page it was that we did. Um, now, that added that all the way down at the bottom, and I want to bring it all the way up to the top. Okay, so I'm going to go right up here. Do the top. I'm just dragging up through my screen right up here. There we go. So now that page is right here, and if I click on it, I can see my page, okay? And um, Patty's asking a question, well, I have this back open. Patty's asking a question if, since I made that video smaller in that box, can the students still see it full screen? They absolutely can, so I hit play, just hit that full screen button, and then that takes you full screen. It'll take it just a second. There we go, now you guys can see that as well. Okay, so I'll hit escape. Pause. All right. Um, and then you guys are asking such great questions. Let's go back to Deborah's question about could I also use this in pages? So, Deborah, let me show you how you can do that. So, if I go home, this course is actually using a home page that is an actual page. Okay. And I know that because it doesn't look like the sort of linear, chunky models modules. Um, and this is the same format that we use for the statewide online courses. So in the statewide online courses, if you've downloaded our template into your sandbox or into one of your shells, um, you'll notice that there are buttons on our statewide template. Let me actually show you our statewide template quickly. Go. In our statewide template, we link directly to the module. So what we did to create that page, let's take a look at that. If I view all the pages here, so um, Deborah, to your question, that home page is now is currently set as the front page. So if I click on that, that takes me back to that page that I would expect. What we did then on this page, if I edit that, is in this page, we actually linked using our content selector directly to the modules. So we came in here to modules and we linked to module one, introduction to virtualization. Same thing, I'm just redoing something that's already done here right now. Module two, installation and configuration. So you can actually create really custom, really elegant navigation in a course if you wanna do it using pages. Um, so you have that option as well, okay? Let's go back into my sandbox course. And um, Susan and Maureen are asking some questions about sort of where can you create this page content? So let's take a look at that. Um, Susan's question is, can I create a new page from within a module? And you absolutely can. So I'm here in the module view. I wanna add a new page to my module two. This is a political science. This class has a lot going on in it. There's math in it, there's political science. You just never know what you're gonna find in this class. Um, so I wanna click the add button and I want to add a new page here. And I could just select a new page. And I could give it a title, MO2, um, Introduction to Political Parties. Okay. So I'd add item. There's that page. Drag it up to the right spot and click on it again. All right. So let's look at another way that we could use uh, this content editor. So I'm going to click Edit. Here in my on my introduction slide. Maybe again, I, I want to add a, an image, okay? So there are a couple of ways I can add images. I can use this embed image option, and this will bring up this uh, sort of search or uh, this image source box. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. If I know the URL of the image that I want to add, so let me show you how that would work. I'm gonna open up a new tab. I'm gonna go to images, political parties. I'm a little afraid to type that search phrase into my search box. If anything bad comes up, I did not try this search before, so I apologize. Should have thought of that. Okay, these look pretty safe. 
Um, so if I click here on images for political parties, and uh, let's say, let's say I want this one, American political parties. I can actually right click on this and uh, go to open image in new tab. And right here, hmm, that didn't work the way I thought it should. Um, sorry. I can go to copy image address. Sorry. I right clicked on the image and I can go to copy image address. And over here in Ivy Learn, that is what I would copy into this box. I don't know if this will work. I've not used this before to try to do this this way. I usually do a canvas or a Flickr image. Um, and then I should be able to type in the alt text box. There we go. You should give it alt text. I apologize. My, my computer locked up there for a second. Um, I can. I can go back into that and give it alt text. So I just clicked on it again, um, and I can give it alt text here. Um, image depicting American political parties. Ah. So what that um, what the alt text does is it makes this viewable by a screen reader. Okay, so you can um, that is what the screen reader will see. I can also add images a couple of other ways. I can add them using the image picker here, and I may want to search Flickr. So Flickr is a photo sharing site. I'm a, an avid amateur photographer, share a lot of my images on Flickr, and I share almost all of them with a Creative Commons license. Um, and so if I want to um, search for po politics, again, I didn't do this search before I uh, came in here, but maybe one of these options will use this money icon. So I can add in images straight from there. These are all free source, so you can use them um, as much as you want without any difficulty. Okay? You can also resize these. Again, I just clicked on it and then drag those handles and notice that it maintains that nice aspect ratio to keep it looking a little nicer. Okay? Um, and we'll center that. And then I'm also going to um, add a table here. So I'm going to add a table. Insert it. It's going to have three columns, two rows, drag that to make it a little bit bigger and maybe this is a uh, week or module one and topic and uh, due date so maybe within your maybe within your module you have several due dates and you want to give students a little calendar we don't recommend this we'd prefer you use the calendar but this is an option that you could use for the table so I'll hit save and publish to create that as well now, I can use that uh, content editor. Um, Maureen's asking whether I can do this in assignments or any of those sorts of things. Absolutely, you can use that there as well. So I could go over here to assignments, and I could create a new assignment. So I'm going to add an assignment, and I could tell my students this is on um, introduction to lines or introduction to equations. And we could add in content here. So after you've read the material in the introduction to lines document and done the practice with the more practice for lines, complete this assignment. Okay, so I could go in here to introduction to lines, come over here to my content picker. Find my page. Sorry, they're in alphabet board. I'm trying to scroll really fast. Or they're lost page. All right, we're just going to go to that one. In a different, I, went, I moved into a different class. That's why I can't find what I'm looking for. And on the practice with more lines. So you notice that I can actually control the words that get highlighted by typing my lines first and then just coming over here and selecting what I want to link to. So that also gives me another option. And I would highlight this assignment however I wanted to. That's not what we're going to cover today. But you could do that as well. And hit save and publish. Okay. Let's look at that new page option, though, because I think, Maureen, that kind of gets to the question you ask, you're asking. I want to add a new page that maybe I haven't created yet. So if I edit this assignment, um, also be sure to check out this reference sheet 
on common types of lines. So if you're like me, as you're building a class, um, you think of various pages that you want to create, various things you want to create. This is how I could use that uh, new page option. So I can add a new page. And notice that I can say reference sheet common types of lines and then insert the link. And so that's now linked to my reference sheet content. So I can also add that link to new page. And hit save. All right. And Patty, I, um, I absolutely can do that. So let me show you. Uh, Patty would like me to demonstrate how to bring a Blackboard course into an Ivy Learn course. Absolutely happy to do that. Um, as we finish up. Let me do a couple more things just to show you a couple of other places where this can be used. Um, this can also be used in our discussions area, um, this rich content editor. And this is the same content editor students have. So think about this. I want to show you this from the way you create assignments for students. This content editor that you have right here, now not necessarily the content selector, but this content editor right here is the same one that students have. So let's go into a course where I am also a student. And this is going to look a little funny because I actually have, actually let's do this. Let me actually show you a course where I am a student. Uh, I'm going to do something here that you can't do. Debbie will not be surprised at all that my test students are Disney characters. So I'm logged into Ariel's account as a student. Ariel is a student in my Sandbox Shell class. And Ariel is coming in here to the Discussions box. And I'm going to go into the Session 1 Politics. So Ariel needs to reply to this discussion post. So she's going to hit Reply. And notice that Ariel has all of the same features that I had. And Ariel also has this content linker. So even though Ariel is a student, Ariel can also link to her submissions on assignments, link to announcements, link to other discussions. So Ariel has those same options that I do as an instructor. And I think that's really important for faculty to understand as you're in this phase where you're building out your courses, to understand the kinds of media options you can encourage students to use. You can have them do um, uploaded media comments, all sorts of things, um, if you would like to do that. So got a lot of really rich options for both you as a faculty member as well as for your students as you are building uh, your assignment. So something to really think about. This is a, um, we've had options like this for students before, um, but these are just an even richer set of them that we have uh, here in Ivy Learn. And so with that, Matthew and I are going to hang out here for a little while. That is sort of everything there is to know about the Rich Content Editor. Don't forget to download that handout. In the handout, we do have a link to all of the Canvas guides. Remember, Canvas is the system that powers Ivy Learn. Um, and it goes in-depth into sort of every single one of these little buttons. Oh, if you'll hang with me for one more second, I am going to show you one more thing because we got uh, this question um, yesterday. And I saw something that I had not seen before. So I'm going to show this to you. A lot of the content you may have may be content that you have um, perhaps copied and pasted from a Word document. And you want to go through that content and copy and paste it into these different, um, into this different format. So I've got a Word document up here, and I want to actually copy and paste this. If I just, this is my, this is my actual handout. Uh, that handout is available on the GoTo uh, webinar menu, which if you can't see that right now, you may be looking for an orange arrow up in the top right hand corner of your screen. And you can pop that out. Looks like everybody found it that was looking for it. Good. All right, so in that handout, I've got this tip, um, which is on normal copy and paste, I would control C, and then I would come over here, and I would control V from my Word document. And look that it maintains pretty good formatting. It's got a few extra spaces in it, so I might come in here um, and remove some of those extra lines of return. But otherwise, it's got pretty good pretty good spacing and held my numbered list um, and held in my bulleted list pretty nicely. It actually looks pretty good copied and pasted from Word. All right, so I could do that and hit post reply. But let's say that I actually didn't want, and that's what it looks like. I must have missed one here. But let's say I didn't actually want that. I actually wanted just the text. So here is the tip. I did a control C to copy it. 
But in actual, over in Ivy Learn, if I come over here and I do Control on my keyboard, Shift on my keyboard, and then V, it'll actually paste it without any of the formatting. So it's removed all of the links that were in that. Let's, let's take a look at that Word document again. Here were all of my links in the Word document. It's removed all of those. It's removed all of the different sizing, all of the bold face, all of those sorts of things. So here's that reply without any of the formatting. So nice, clean version. Okay, that is that was my sort of tip I found while scrolling through the guides last night in preparation for this session. All right, so with that, um, that is the sort of conclusion of our formal webinar. Matthew and I are going to hang out here for a little while and answer questions. And uh, it was, I think, Patty who asked if I would demo um, how to do a, a Blackboard into Ivy Learn course. So let me show you that. Um, anybody else that wants to hang out, feel free. Um, but if you are uh, finished and want to get on with your day, um, feel free to hit that X in the top right-hand corner of the GoToMeeting webinar.